Welcome, welcome. Hi, ladies. Well, we have a very exciting treat for you tonight, even though you, will not, you won't notice right now. But we're actually filming this with two cameras. So today is October 20th. Um, because we have limitations, and we've talked about this many times, we have limitations as to how high a speed we can film and broadcast and download and all that other computer savvy stuff. We are broadcasting in one resolution and we're recording in another resolution. So that way, when you go back to view them, you'll have the higher resolution and it'll be a little bit better. So we are always trying to improve here at Solo Patterns. Um, just let's hope it all goes well. How's that? The techies, the guys behind the scenes are taking care of me. I'm standing here chit-chatting with you all. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Again, it is October 20th. We are getting ready for Halloween, I hope you are, and tonight we're going to talk about accessories. I've got six accessories that I want you to, that you should be making. I don't know that you might want to, but you should be making. But before we do that, we always traditionally have our questions answers, and so we're going to follow that same format. Before we do that, I just want to update you. Our pattern of the month is pattern number 200, Kate's Blast, the webcast last time. We went over that. We also have our pre-sale our series 300 pre-sale on our PBS show is going now it'll end November 1st so when you order now you get a free pattern and we'll show you the pattern a little bit later on we've got actually a live model here showing you the pattern um, and that's we got all kinds of fun things going on but that's that's good for now all right so questions how are we doing on questions I know I have to you have to start your brain going before you can think of anything to ask but hopefully we'll get some good questions. We have all kinds of questions online. I did have, and I answer them personally, just because I think that some some of us are maybe inhibited to ask over this type of forum, or maybe technologically we don't know how to do this type of forum, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but it's always good to just have the questions come in, because it really helps me understand kind of what you're learning. I did have an email come in, and she said, okay, I've made up the pants, now what? I'm like, what do you mean now what? <laughs> anyway, that was a really interesting email. We've got a lot of webcast on now what? After you make the muslin, we drape, LCD. So um, just go through that process and then take photos. And also just let me <laughs> make note, I had several people send photos that are so massive and so many that it completely shuts down <laughs> my inbox. So kind of like, don't do that. <laughs> If you're going to send a photo, you know, there's a way to like reduce its size. I, I couldn't tell you how to do it, but find out how to reduce the size of the photo and then send it. All right. Because <laughs> my inbox was shut down for about five hours. I didn't even know it. It was rejecting everything. <laughs> so that was kind of comical. Um, about the top, we're going to do this tonight. It's a secret right now. So you can't ask questions about my top, but we'll get to it. Everything it, that I have on, well, not everything, but it, they're all accessory items. So we're going to talk about each one of them. You can make them. You can make them all. They're fast and quick and easy. For fur, um, I used. I've used two for fur. Basically, do not leave out the darts when you do a fur. A lot of people think, oh, it's just going to be a, you know, why would you put a dart in fur? But but fur because of its thickness, it really needs that shaping. So you know when you work with fur you just simply put the fur to the outside the long strands to the outside and then you can sew on the inside so I used 195 I did a vest out of 195 the sweater set I, I still did the French dart and I just did it sleeveless it's amazing it re I love the vest I mean I just love it so I would just simply do either um, a regular t-shirt pattern or a blouse pattern that you leave off the sleeves. You could really do anything. What you want to do with fur is you want to minimize the number of pieces. You really just want one front and one back. But don't leave out the darts because if you do, you'll get this big, you'll look like a ball walking down the street. You don't want to do that. It'll make you look heavier. If you do it right, it'll make you look slimmer. Is it possible to lower the roll line on a jacket pattern? It is. It is. Let me try to figure out how I can show you this. Um, well, I, you know what? I wasn't ready for that chalkboard. Okay, so let's let let me explain to you what a roll line is. Basically, and and the roll line isn't really critical. In fact, 
the rule line, when I was in college in the 80s, whenever that was, 70s, I guess, you know, in those days we used to have pad stitch. And, and that was those little chicken feet things that went up and down. And you used to actually pad stitch with the roll rolled. You'd roll it over your hand and then you'd pad stitch it that way. Obviously what they discovered in subsequent years is that the roll automatically happened when you go from a collar to uh, the front, it automatically happens. You don't have to actually stitch it. The roll will create itself. So what that roll line is, is it's the styling of the front blending into the styling of the collar. So center front is straight a grain, and then as it starts to go to a collar, it actually goes past center front to the opposite side. So if you look at your pattern and see where it goes off grain to the other side, then you're just going to lower that point where it starts going to the other side. I don't know if that makes sense or not. Um, but anytime a garment crosses center front, that's when the roll line happens. So just watch and see where it starts to go off and you can lower that point. You don't have to change the collar. It'll automatically roll into the collar. You don't have to do anything different there at all. Just literally look at the point where it's crossing over to the opposite center front and adjust that point. Okay, and then you do the same on the jacket front as you would on the facing. All right, how does a square shoulder show on a body in a garment where you may need to raise the shoulder angle. I'm going to steal this pattern right here. Hold on a minute. Where, how does a, a square shoulder, okay, so the terminology square shoulder is really, I'm going to use this pattern for a minute. I'm going to go to the back just to show you the back. In this particular pattern, the back and the front are going to be somewhat the same. So here's my shoulder angle. When a square shoulder is the reference, it just simply means that this angle is decreased. So it's raised up a little bit right there. So you are going from this point. This point does not change because that point has nothing to do with the angle of your shoulder. It's just simply the point where the front and the back are divided. But when you are going to this point, it would be more square or straighter than the angle that's currently on the pattern. I would never change it. I would never try to measure it. It's so much easier to drape it. Literally just put it on. You could leave extra seam allowance here. So let's say if you're worried that you're more square shoulder than the pattern, just leave extra seam allowance, like leave an inch there. And then if you have to let it out, you can. So once you let it out, do it on your body. The signs that you'll get or what it looks like when your shoulder is more square than the pattern is you'll get diagonal lines that start at the shoulder point and they'll go towards center front and center back. They're diagonal lines, they'll start right at the shoulder. So you, it looks like it just needs more. So when you add here, you've made the armhole a little bit bigger, just raise the whole armhole up. So don't change the armhole size, just start it at this raised point and then go down. So there's, nothing, there's no reason to change the armhole. There's nothing wrong with the armhole. It's just starting at a lower point. So if you just start it higher, you'll be in good shape. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. All right, how are we doing? Will you show an example of the left front placket fold on paper? And wait, I gotta understand what you're saying. Will you show an example of the left front placket fold. Yeah, what is that? A left front placket fold. Left front placket. Any fur? No, that's okay. That's okay. We just got a lot coming in. So he's trying to screen it all and he's trying to do 10 things at one time, which is really hard to do. He's real good at eight, but it's the ninth one that tips him. Oh, the placket fold. Um, yeah, I can show you that. Just as long as you ignore the paper I'm using. Um, a, a men's shirt has, the fronts are actually cut the same, like if you put the two fronts together, and, and women's shirt can be done this way too, they're just generally not. Um, so if you put the two fronts together, they're actually identical. The reason we put two different fronts in the pattern is because the fold lines are different from one side to another. Now, 
And this, the reason this is, is because generally when you're doing men's shirting, shirtings are the same on both sides. So there's not a wrong side and a right side. That means when the shirt neckline is open, it's okay to see the wrong side. Women's shirts are usually not done like this because you don't want to see, and there's a bad side. So that's why a facing is put on the inside of women's shirts. So for the men's shirt, again, ignore what we're doing here, but one side, and you'll be able to figure out what side, it folds, it folds, and it stitches down. There's no placket. This would be where the buttons are. Okay, so it just folds, folds, stitches all the way down the front. The other side, which is the front placket, actually folds in the same. I'm hoping you can see this. And then the inside of the shirt makes a little fold like that. And you actually stitch on the fold of the inside, and what that makes is this nice little fold on the outside. So it's all done from the inside, but this is the raw edge. It's actually encased as you fold it, and then you stitch on the wrong side here on the edge of this fold, and it actually makes the buttonhole extension all the way down. Okay, it makes the nice placket all the way down, then you stitch on both sides. Could y'all see that? Okay, so you just fold it once, and then, again, this is the inside. This just comes over. Oops, I'm sorry. Okay, so this folds wrong sides together. This comes over and covers up the raw edge, and you stitch on the fold of what how that's made, and then that makes the front. So you have a nice little placket on the front. Did you get that? Did you? Yay! Okay. I haven't sewn in years, so which of your videos would you recommend to start with? It's called Success from the Start. <laughs> That's why we named it that, Success from the Start. We think it's really important to um, kind of get you guys rethinking, and, and please don't take this wrong. I think that our pattern companies, what they did over the years is they just kept dumbing us down and dumbing us down. You got to know you got to know what you like. You got to know what a French curve is. I mean, you got to know those kind of basics um, as to so you can think in in the right direction. So success from the start does that for you. It teaches you what a French curve is. It teaches you how to use a French curve. It teaches you to kind of go through that process. Success from the start. And welcome. We're glad you're here. If you haven't sewn in so many years, we will get you sewing again. We love to sew and. I keep thinking, did I really make all these clothes in all these closets? And the answer is, yes, I really did. All right, we're good. It's 8.15, so let's go ahead. I've, I've really got a lot of fun things to do tonight. So let me tell you what my goal was, and it's exactly aimed at maybe somebody who hasn't sewn for a while and really wants to get back into sewing, or you can do it if you have sewn for a long time because accessory items are very especially as we go into winter, they're just really popular. And the greatest thing about accessory items is they're so easy. So I will tell you I was shopping at Neiman Marcus. I won't tell you who the designers are because I, I think part of me thinks that's kind of tacky. Part of me thinks it's great, but part of me gets worried it's a little tacky. But I will tell you I was at Neiman Marcus. I'll tell you some of the price points, okay? So I want to show you six accessories and go down where you can make these. If you can just, all you gotta do is stitch a straight line on the sewing machine. If you can handle that, you're good to go. And I do think it's fun, especially this time of year as we go into the holidays. If you just wanna do something nice for somebody, not even necessarily for Christmas, you just wanna do something nice and you wanna tell them thank you. So the first one we're gonna start with is the cape I have on. The cape I have on is a square. That's it. Now this particular cape, no, not this one. I made this one, but I copied it from Neiman's. Theirs was $1,200. $1,200 for a yard and a half of fabric is what it is. You could get two if you wanted to be longer, but still it's astronomical. And if you kind of want to see one close up, you can go to Neiman's, you can go to Dillard's, you can go to stores and see them, but I'm kind of going to hold my arms out. What you see is this is the width. So the width of this particular one is 30 inches or a yard across. It depends on how long you want it. You may not want it that long. And then it's about, I would actually go two yards. The, mine's a little bit short. I'm gonna make the next one a little bit longer. What I did is I measured the one at the store and I duplicated it. I should have tried the one on at the store because I'm taller. So I think two yards from me would have been a little bit longer. What you don't want to do is you don't want to overpower. You don't want it to overpower you. So you've got this slit 
I mean the the square fabric you've got two layers and all you're gonna do is put a slit right up the middle that's it so this particular fabric is called black white flex and it's it's a knit and so I didn't even finish the edges I literally just left them but you could you could use fold over elastic you could use you could just surge the edge and leave it you, you know you guys could do plenty of hemming techniques and so recognize that it's just held with a belt and the belt in so this is pattern number 125 underneath the white top is 125 it's called Leanne's top but you could do any turtleneck if you don't like turtlenecks you could just do a shell if turtlenecks are too much for you um, I only did the turtleneck because I just really liked the look of the turtleneck so that's why I went with 125 and 125 comes down in the front so it's not so turtlenecky if you know what I mean okay so in the back um, it's loose you don't put the belt under the back you just put the belt around you and then you put it in the front and then just close it up and it's just a great look and it's all over for fall it's just and they're just ridiculously expensive so take your favorite fabric that you like you need two yards of it get the width you want and then just cut up a slit and finish it put it on wrap it with a belt I would put a tag in it just so that you know which one's front and back and it will not look homemade if it has a tag in it that's just my biggest piece of advice for you pretty lousy advice isn't it but I would not put a I would put a tag in it okay now you got to ask questions as we're going because if you go back I'm not gonna get the I'm you know it's, I'm not gonna get it as long as you understand but again if you guys will just run to the stores and look at these you'll just say oh my gosh I can do that and you're right we can okay so the second thing I want to show you is I want to do a scarf now I know everybody knows a scarf and you know but I, I really liked this particular scarf I thought it was just really really beautiful so let me show you what I did with this scarf and again these scarves were in the 80s so this takes two yards of fabric the, the fabric is going to be um, 30 inches well it's 60 inches wide but then you're going to reduce it down to a width of 30 so I only need 30 inches of the width you could go if it's 60 inches wide I guess you could make two of them out of a yard but I love the bottom of this and so it, you can tie it as tight or as loose as you want and this could be great on the bottom of a t-shirt I mean you could do it in a lot of different places but let me show you the beauty of this um, when we go into that did I curve the neckline on the cape no it's soft enough fabric it just kind of falls away from your neck I literally just cut a straight line stopped it that was it because I wanted to keep it like literally as simple as the stores did there was no neck shaping there was none of that okay can you explain cutting up the front of the cape well you get the front and you cut up the front <laughs> literally um, imagine if, if this is if I'm just laying down flat I swore I was not gonna get undressed tonight okay if I'm just laying down flat and you can see the fabrics laying here and the fabrics laying on top literally right in the center just cut up halfway you've got it folded there's a fold right here at the shoulder line so literally just cut up the front in the middle to to the center I mean you know halfway yeah right in the middle halfway up the back yes is this cool it's really fun I mean it's just really fun to wear and I'm gonna tell you I went to a party Saturday night and it was outside and you know it's not cold here in Dallas but it gets cooler in the evenings so I didn't have this one on I did another one out of another fabric but I did it just for that night and I'm telling you it took me 30 minutes and I had a new outfit it was really cool so again this is great just for all kinds of different fabrics if you have a woven you've got to finish those edges and knit you don't have to but I'm lot yes you're seeing lots of fringe that's why I did this okay so now you've got to have a knit for this and this is a really fun kind of fringe to make so I want to show you how I did this okay now this is two yards so it's a yard long and the reason you need it to be two yards now see I did it to match my shirt is this cool is you've got to put one here and in order you're gonna you're gonna do it double like that in order to do it double you need that to be two yards if it's not two yards it'll either choke you if it's longer than two yards it'll hang down too low this is a great length two yards is a great length to be wrapped twice and have it be just appropriate and I probably measured I don't know 40 scarves in different stores the majority of them were 
right at two yards in length. Some a little shorter, some a little longer, but two yards was a good um, height. It doesn't matter how tall you are. Shorter women aren't shorter from their neck to their bust, okay? They're shorter elsewhere, but if you can all keep the same, it'll, it'll work well. Okay, so I want to show you how just a few little secrets on this scarf. So, you know, it's not hard, but I will tell you that I had to buy this, I had to buy this scarf to figure it out. You know, I could have stood in the store longer, but I just decided not to. So what I've done here is kind of one that's halfway done. So I want to show this to you. And what I'm going to do is um, kind of just drape it over here so you'll get the feel as to the cuts and everything. Okay, so it's two yards long, and it's 30 inches deep, the width of it. Well, the width is two yards. You're going to make one seam is all you're going to do. I did a French seam. So French seam is... Um, wrong sides together and then right sides together you encase that seam inside but you don't have to you could do a serge you could do anything and then I put a label on the back seam because I wanted every time I grab the scarf I know that the seam or the label goes to the back all right so then what you do is you're gonna cut every two inches so your cuts are gonna be two inches wide and they're gonna go up 17 inches 16 or 17 it doesn't matter Okay, so of the 30 inches that it has in the width, you're cutting up 16 to 17 inches. I used this border print because I think it's so pretty and it automatically embroiders your scarf. So, and this is one of our fabrics that's online. It's just, I just loved it. I thought it was perfect for this. So the rest of this black is what I cut off. So you've got to have an even number of cuts. So that's why if it's 36 inches long and times two, every two inches should give you an even cut. So you don't have to be real particular because I even notice in the scarf. Whoops, sorry. I even noticed in the scarf that I bought, um, it wasn't exactly even. And there was one that looked like it was kind of ripped. I mean, it, I was surprised how cheap. Mine is much better. I did much more care in making sure those cuts were even. Okay, so then what you do is you're going to take two of the cuts together and you're just going to take and you're going to go to the left you're going to overlap the top and then bring the string through the hole now I'm going to do a couple because I played with this for a long time and these knots look so much better when they're done like that that I mean you can tie your knots however you want but I'm telling you as I was untying them and tying them it took me a while to kind of get that done so you're going to take two, go to, I don't want this to fall, you're going to go to the left and then come back over the hole, so I've got my fingers, there's the hole, and then from behind bring it through the front of the hole. Now if you just pull down straight, the knot will go too far down. I only want the knot about three inches from the cut edge. So pull a little bit this way, pull a little bit this way, until you can kind of get that knot centered where you want it. Because I want, when I hold it up, I want all those first row of knots about the same. It'll look best if they're about the same. If they're all different all over the place, then it, you know, it starts to look sloppy. Okay, so I'll do it one more time. I'm going to take these two. I'm going to go to the left, over, come from the back of the hole, and come through. And I've got two, light, I've got two of the strands with me because I want a little bit of that hole to show I'm kind of centering where those are. Okay, so that's my first one. I would go all the way around with your first one. If you start tying the second one, I'm going to tell you something. It'll bite you because you won't know which twos to go when you start on the other side. So I would just be patient and work all the way around, finish the first row, and then start the second row. You're going to have three rows, and then you're going to have six inches left. So that's why when you cut up your 16 or 17 inches, it'll work. Okay, so then I'm going to take one from each. Same, same method of tying. I don't care what knot method you use, you just want to use the same one continually so that you get the same look of the knots. And because again I don't want this too close, tie those tight to where you're going to be again about two inches down from the second row. Okay, so these every other ones then go together. This now goes over to here. Of the done one? Oh, the done one. Okay, sure. I just love this. I, I, you know what I can't wait to do it on is a t-shirt. I'm going to do a long t-shirt and do this on the bottom. I think it's really cute. And I will tell you that this scarf, because I was watching a movie while I was doing it, took me an hour to do the whole thing. 
it might take you a little bit longer but there so you can see it so here are the two that are tied together that's your first row of knots then you've got there's your first row every two are tied then one from each of these comes together on the second row and then one from each of these comes for the third row and then you just let the balance hang down easy enough perfect you love that don't you love that I love that I was so excited when I saw that I thought oh my gosh I can do that alright any questions on that and it's just a great looking scarf the other thing I was thinking of when I was tying it is I'll have to show you you could you could put little beads you know just every once in a while it would just be so cool to put just a little bead right when you go to tie it so that it's tied into the knot there's just so many fun things you can do with that my job is to give you the ideas your guys job is to go crazy with the ideas and then you have to post them on Facebook alright that's that's how this works alright are we good with that alright good make some scarves oh the weight you want you it's gotta be light the rayons are perfect um, as far as knits go you've really gotta have a lightweight knit otherwise the knots will just look like you know they just look terrible they're too heavy they're too thick so it's rayon knit is the best weight to use okay okay um, next I want to do a belt because I'm a lover of belts and anytime I go to Neiman's and I remember I told you I'm only going to Neiman's for the belt I'm not gonna tell you who the designer is the, the belts are not cheap so I was gifted one of these belts years ago and it was and, and I did my research just because I'm nosy and I wanted to find out how much it cost it was over 200 almost $300 so we're gonna make that belt because it's so because we can how's that so the belt that I have on and I could take it off it's not that big a deal this is the one I got gifted and this is like $300 but this belt is six dollars don't you love it <laughs> I love this it's just the idea and so again it took me maybe it took me longer to find the parts and decide what I was gonna do than it took to make the belt the belt took me maybe an hour at the most but figuring it all out took me the longest and I'll show you how to do it so and I'm gonna actually take this off to show you how to do this um, go to any of your craft stores in fact I not only went to my craft stores, I went to Home Depot. I had more fun at Home Depot than I've ever had before. Home Depot was now becoming my fashion guru. So I decided, again, the concept is simply that the belt is joined together by strips of leather and strips of black elastic. So that gives the belt um, an ability to fit different shapes and sizes it doesn't and it gives you an ability to breathe without um, it choking you off and then there's just some kind of closure in the front so if you want to you could make it longer like the one I have on and you can actually clip it and wear it here and then let some hang down there's just again I'm just gonna give you the basic and then it's your guys' job to go crazy from there and show me what you've done so as I shopped around to find all these different things that I could make for these parts here I came up with washers wouldn't that be a cool belt just all the way around this belt would cost you four dollars <laughs> 40 cents a washer I figured 10 washers these are these little um, shower curtain rings that are at your craft stores and you can clip them together with all kinds of stuff this is the um, carabiner carabiners and you know Home Depot has these and they're decorative they're all kinds of different colors there's a beautiful it's actually a camouflage color but it's a real dark dark green oh my goodness it was so pretty so I decided on this really pretty this is like a gray black tone so I could put black elastic in there they also have these little quick links you guys you can tell I had a lot of fun in the stores <laughs> but also there's just these little spring links and they just join it all together but keep in mind that what you're doing now again I started with my you know I have those black rolls of elastic or just any elastic it doesn't matter and I don't know if you remember but I showed you earlier that you can actually cut this elastic you don't have to use the whole width so what I did is I laid down my belt so I could figure out how long I wanted it to be 
and then I decided the pattern of my how many little pieces I had bought. Mine was round, square, square, round, round, square, square, round, round, square, square, round. That was my pattern. Big, <laughs> real genius pattern, isn't it? Then I had a clip and I put that together. Now, these I found at Joann's and they were 50% off. They were having a 50% off sale. So, literally, it wasn't even $4. Then I took scraps of leather and the elastic. So, I laid down all my pieces. I figured out how long it needed to be and how many of those pieces I needed. And that helped me decide how long my elastics needed to be in between. So when you cut your elastics and your leathers, and what I did is, if you notice on the front, it's leather, and you, I'm sure you can't see it. On the front is leather, and then as I got to the back, it's elastic. So even though the whole thing looks the same, this is a leather which doesn't have the stretch, but then the elastic has the stretch. You don't, you could do elastic the whole thing, but you don't need stretch throughout the whole belt. You're really just trying to give yourself a little bit of movement if you need it. And you could have gone longer and, you know, had that. I did not want that. I just wanted a belt that I could clip and make. So when I go to join two little sections, I'm going to use this as an example you're going to take the elastic on the right side, put it in the right side, and you're going to join it in the middle. And so that's where you stitch in the middle. And all I did, you can literally stitch over these things. My foot just went right over them. And my needle still stayed where I was. And just stitch a little square in the middle. So that's what holds the elastic in place. And you know what I'm going to do, you guys? I'm going to tell you the designer. <laughs> I'm going to tell you the designer because I'm sure a bunch of people have copied her anyway. Because the reason why is then you can go to Neiman's and you can look close up as to how this is done and it'll kind of help you. But I just love this belt. I've, I've just worn it and worn it and worn it and then I decided I wanted something different but I didn't want to spend $300 for a belt. And it was so easy. It was just the idea. Susie Orr, it's O-H-R. O-H-E-R, I think it is. O-H-E-R is the belt designer and you can just go in and look at all the different shapes don't get caught up in what the shapes look like because there's so many different shapes I think that would look great that really would work well my washer one will be done next week you'll see me with my 40 cent washers on my waist here in a little bit but I think it's just really cute all right easy enough for the belt all right again it's just ideas I just go out and get the ideas and then you guys can do whatever you want with them Okay, so the other thing we're going to do now is we're going to do appliques. Not appliques. They're probably called the, the wrong thing, but I couldn't actually find what they were called. Um, I googled them for a long time and finally gave up. But what they are is they are these things. So I actually ordered these and got them in. And the coolest thing is, is I got the fabric along with it. So we've got three different neck ones that are we've got the same color fabric that goes with them. We've got two fronts and one back, so I want to show them to you. This is Anne's top, and this is the exact same shape of Anne's top, pattern number 115. So I didn't have to do any changes. I literally just slapped it on, stitched it on, and that was it. It was just really, really uh, pretty darn easy. This one here, I'm going to bring this forward because I want you to see the back. It took a little more time because it's a back. So I'm going to turn this around so that you can see the back and it's just really really beautiful. And I did take a picture of it and put it online. So again, this is a little lighter than the shirt but it just blends beautifully. It's really very nice. So this is the titanium rayon knit. It's new. We just put it up over the weekend. And then the back piece is there at the same time. Now these are like five dollars. They're very inexpensive and then you just sew them on and then just cut out the back. Now with this one, because I wanted it to be a little more stable, I did two rows of sewing. So I did one on the very edge and then I came in like a quarter inch all the way around so that before I cut it out it had a little more stability on it. And that's the only thing I would suggest to you. When I did the front one, now the pattern, the front of this is pattern 215 is Nikki's top and I just cut it longer and you want to, you could use any back for this. It wouldn't matter what back you used. All of the backs are pretty much the same. It just really gives a nice punch to the back of the, the garment. So that's why I did that particular one. 
this one I did the same thing I still stitched twice so I stitched you can't see it you can stitch anywhere you want in here just get matching thread and just go right in here and you can stitch right on the edge of the neckline and then stitch on the edge down here so that you get some um, depth but you don't just get it to where it looks like it's plastered on if you want to you can include the shoulders into the shoulder seams I didn't even do that I just literally stitched right at the shoulder seam it looks great it really does look nice looks it's very pretty it's just very pretty so we've got the black um, and then of course the black rayon knit that matches we've got the deep purple and the deep purple that matches then we've got the titanium and the titanium rayon that matches but you can mix up the colors too I think it'd be really pretty to do black and the titanium I had thought about that doing that m until we got this knit in and it was so perfectly matched I couldn't stand it I had to do that one okay any questions on that you're just gonna lay it on if it if the neckline of one you're using does not match your neckline of your pattern use your French curve put it on the applique and and the easiest thing is to really fold it in half I'm gonna grab my French curve hang on here ah there we go sorry 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 I want to show you this so you just can see so you can take the applique and put the French curve right in there so that you can see okay the 14 is at the shoulder and 20 I'm looking at it backwards 22 and a half is center front so then you can draw that exact line on your pattern and then make sure you add your seam allowance so hem your neckline first and then go through lay the applique on it and then just stitch on and again it's just a great little even if you've got a shirt and you've got a stain on the front <laughs> and you're trying to cover the stain here you go five bucks solves it it looks like a brand new shirt and again great great fun things to do for Christmas okay all right so the next thing I want to talk about is leggings so leggings are an accessories everybody should be making them you have to be making them we put up three fabrics today that are all fabulous for leggings they all will do you justice women have said to me I wore them when I was young you need to wear them again because they're gonna be around they're not going anywhere and don't let it take five years for there to be here before you start wearing them just get with it and wear them now we've got a leggings pattern they're so fast to make they're easy to make I find my wear mine out before I need to make another pair because I wear them all the time but let me just give you a suggestion go back to these little um, these are shower what are they shower they're these little grommets, these little plastic grommets. These are the coolest thing. You're not going to be able to see the side of my pants. Okay, but they just put grommets down the side of leggings. You don't have to put as many as I did. You can put one, you can put five, you can make them as modest or immodest as you want. But they're really fun just as a detail to go down the side to just cut out the middle, slap that grommet on. And these, you know, I think you guys have seen these. You just take the two sides and you just literally clasp them together that has comes with a little template and you just cut out the middle and then it's a great way to decorate the side of leggings or to just give you a hole or do something fun with okay so we're okay with that all right I'm going faster than I thought we're gonna show you now our PBS pattern well we're gonna show you the last accessory you'll want to make or you should make everybody should make and our main guy in here huh? okay hold on a minute we have to we have to Oh, the leggings Le leggings are just easy you know yeah there's a couple things about the leggings you know when I, I've made so many pairs of these that I get to thinking that um, everybody knows how to make them hold on one second we're getting a few we're getting a few technical behind the scenes things all right but before while we're doing that I wanted to show you this was the um, jacket that I'd started last time and this was the, the I had only made the panels and put them together so if you want to see this this is completed I absolutely love this it's just so beautiful I'm trying to think abstract art or art 
abstract or something like that, I think we called it. Okay, so we're going to bring this in and then I'll go back to the other things that I was talking about. All right, so this is George. This is the main love of my life. And for George, what we did is we made a pattern because everybody should have a sweater for winter. This is George's. So what I did, as you can see, I made George and I matching clothes. <laughs> so this is my sweater and this is George's sweater. And George loves his sweater. You know what? I kind of experimented around last winter just to see if he minded it being on or if he ever tried to get it off or any of that. He doesn't. I think he knows how cute he looks. And I think he actually likes to have the sweater on. So what this has is it's a little turtleneck. And you can actually put it up. Like if it's cold, cold outside and you're taking him outside, you could put it all the way up. Or if it's a little warmer, you could put it down and it's got little legs. But I'm going to show you how to do this. Just like if forget the collar and forget the legs. We're just going to do it really simple. All right, George. No. All right, there he goes. Off he goes. All right, so he's actually on the front of the pattern. I think you guys have seen the cover of that pattern. That pattern is what comes free with the 300 series. So literally all you have to do you know, like our, the pattern, before you get the pattern, our pattern is refined. We did a nice little turtleneck and we did nice little legs and the legs are double. I mean, you know, we did it nice. But if you just measure around the chest and how long you want it and literally cut a rectangle and then just sew up the middle because it's got to be a knit. It does have to be a knit because you don't want closures on the dog. You don't want any of that kind of stuff. So it has to be a knit. There has to be um, just one seam up the front and then you're just going to cut two holes for his for the his I mean for their arms to go through you don't need the refinement of the extra you don't need to do that you don't need the, the turtleneck once you get the pattern you can do all that um, just because it's based on stretch and sizing and all that kind of stuff but you could just put one seam down the middle kind of just like the cape that I have on and make a little sweater for him for the dog as well so I think it's adorable George has like quite a wardrobe now of sweaters and he likes them and honestly when we take him places we love him dressed in his little sweater he just looks so ready and he gets a lot of attention when he's dressed in a sweater <laughs> he's laying here by my feet now now he he realizes he was uh, the star of the show the appliques are online, yes. There's a black, they're under fabric. They're just right under fabric. They're right next to the fabric color, except for black because we already had black rayon. But the black applique, the deep purple, and the um, titanium, they're all right under the fabric. So don't go any place else to find that. One thing I wanted to say about the leggings is with leggings, don't make leggings that aren't fabric that has a two-way stretch. If you do, it'll stretch around, but you'll just be miserable. You won't be able to move your legs. You won't be able to bend over. It's just miserable. So just be careful. I remember years ago, the first pair of leggings I made, um, I thought, oh, I don't need up and down stretch. It's not that big a deal. Well, trust me, it's that big a deal. I, I would highly recommend you not try it. All right, so questions. I got through all those pretty fast. I didn't think, I thought they were, I would take more time. We doing okay? All right, so can you guys make these easy enough? So see, what I have on is leggings. I have on my cape I made, the belt, and the only thing that, I mean, I made this, but the only thing a little harder is just the 125, the turtleneck. And there you have it. It's a really simple little outfit, but it's fashionable, trendy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Do I what? I didn't round anything. I truly did not round anything, you guys. Now, when I was at Neiman's and I was kind of doing all this investigative stuff, some were rounded, some were not. Some um, had edges over, some did not. So I decided I was going to take the simplest, easiest. I wasn't going to round anything. I wasn't going to do any of that. I simply laid it down, double layers, cut halfway up the middle to the fold line, put it on. That's it. So that's not even a 10 minute project. <laughs> I guess it takes you 10 minutes to cut the fabric. What kind of closure did you put on the art panels jacket? Oh yeah, okay, so I did the, um, um, it's, 
Yeah, we're looking it up because I never remember the name. I can bring it closer so you can see. It's the ring. It's it's called Gunmetal Clasp. It's under Notions on our website, Gunmetal Clasp. And so there's just the ring on that side and that. You can wear it open. It just hangs open if you decide you want to. But with the abstract art and the fabric, I, th I thought it just really blended well. I love the coloration. It was just a little bit of color, but not too much. And then I've got a little bit of leather piping just around the neck edge, you know, to where it stops. But love it. Love it, love it. Can't wait for it to get a little cooler so I can wear it. Wear it with jeans. Wear it. Black jeans would look great. Anything you want to put it with would look really nice. And don't go, the, the underneath part should just be real simple. Just a little shell, a black shell, charcoal gray something. Don't go crazy. Don't try to contrast the under shell. A lot of times I say to you when you're doing black and white to contrast the shell, don't do it in this case because the jacket really is the feature. It's the art. It's, it really is almost like a piece of art. So don't try to contrast it with anything. Can you put a fancy zipper on the cape? See, you're thinking, there you go. Of course, that's your job. You know, when I was doing the first one, when I, was, when I first discovered them at Neiman's, I was like jumping up all over the place. And the lady, you know, oh, can I help you? No, I just want to look at capes. <laughs> I'm measuring them and taking. And she came back like three or four times. She can't help you. I said, no, I'm just measuring all these capes. I want to make sure they're the right length. And, you know, she just let me be and let me play. Um, I started thinking of all those things. So that's your job, is to think of all those things. Because I decided I could make 15 capes and show you all the ideas that I came up with. But you all get the idea. You don't need 15 capes. And I've got other things to do besides make 15 capes. All right? So that's your job. But you can see where you can really quickly eliminate your stash. Is that fair? <laughs> but again, keep in mind that if you don't do them knit, then you're going to have to finish edges or woven or you're going to have to figure out something for the edges. Which pattern did you use for the art panels jacket? This is pattern number 1950. It's called Max's jacket. It was our pattern. The reason I used this one, number one, it was the best one. But also remember back in January, we, it was our pattern of the month. So I know a lot of you have it. It's, um, we went over it. We fit it. We did all the details to it. So I was hoping that you could just get fabric for it and it would work great. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece of fabric and jacket as well. Any suggestions on figuring out the size for the leggings? Leggings. I don't think I say that right. I say leggings. It sounds like a pirate or something. Leggings. Um, no, I mean just it. the reason that's a good question is because how stretchy your fabric is will depend on the size. If you've got a really, really stretchy fabric then you're, it's going to be too big. But in my experience, the last pair I made, for instance, I made my, my fabric wasn't that stretchy. I made a size 18. Once I had made that up, they were not as taunt as I wanted taunt, taut as I wanted them to be. And so I just went down in size. So it's much easier to go down as it is to go up. So if in doubt, go up. And just wrap the tape. You want them a one-to-one. -one. And the numbers on the back of the pattern are all finished garment measurements. So you should be able to just measure your hip and go from there. Your waist is elastic, so don't really worry about the waist. You want to buy them for your hips and your hip size. Okay? Make leggings. Make your tops a little longer and get some leggings made. They're very quick. How many yard? Well, this is actually sold by the panel. The fabric is, um, we have a, we have a um, video on YouTube that the one we did on the little fabric that we showed you, and it has, we showed this fabric. We actually showed the yardage. So it's a panel. You're going to need two panels, um, one for the jacket body and one for the sleeves and facings. And regardless of size, those two panels will, will do it for you. Okay. Where is the selvage on your cape? That's a very good question. The selvage on my cape, where would it be? I cut it off. I cut it off because this is the width of the fabric and I didn't want it to be 60 wide, so I cut it off. So there's a cut edge on this edge and there's a cut edge on this edge. I probably could have left it on, um, but I didn't. So. I cut it I cut a little bit off of each edge. 
of the width of the fabric. This particular fabric, the reason I used it is it's 66 inches wide. So it, I knew it had plenty of width. I didn't need that much width, but I knew it had plenty of width. And so all I needed to do was get the yardage and the length and that I used two yards. And, and again, because I was using all these measurements and figuring out which ones I wanted, when I first put it on, it, it was like a comforter. It was way long and way wide. And so then it was a matter of don't take it past your elbows. That's kind of a good stopping point is to your elbows. If it gets longer than that, it starts to look like you're wrapping your blanket around you. So I wouldn't go past your elbows. And then as far as the length goes, um, just get it to where it's covering your rear end in the back. And then it'll do the same thing in the front. Okay? Yeah, um, you're just going to take, I'm going to, I don't have a leather scrap up here, but I'll show you a little elastic piece. If I find my little elastic piece, I had it here. Well, we'll cut a new one. So I started with two inches, I started with this elastic that's two inches wide. Now, not all elastic can you just cut um, without it fraying off the sides, but this you can. So. I'm going to say that I cut that piece probably four inches long. That's probably a good amount to give you. Now leather, you're using all these materials that don't fray. You don't have to finish edges. You could make little strips of fabric. Again, the sky's the limit as far as ideas what you could do with this. I think it'd be a great project for a young girl who wants to learn to sew and you could make her a belt and she would love it. So there's your strip right there, or leather, whatever it is you're using. I'm going to use my washers this time because they're light in color and you can see them. I'm going to go in the front of both of the washers until they meet in between. And then when they meet in between, I've got one layer here, one layer here, and they overlap. And I sew through those two layers plus the top. So I'm sewing through three layers of leather, fabric, elastic, whatever it is. So see, they, they meet there, and I'm going to lap, lap, and then sew them down. You could sew just a line. I sewed a little rectangle in the middle. So on my belt here, where the leather is, in the middle of the leather, I've got a little rectangle. So all the fronts are smooth, and then all the backs, you can see where I've lapped the little leather piece. Can you see that? Okay, so that's the back, and then there's the front. So you just lap them through to where all the raw edges are on the inside. All right, how's that? I got your brains going, huh? This is um, the rayon knit, rayon knit. Mm -hmm. Well, it's an off-white. We don't have it currently. We don't have it currently. Nope. Are we good? Okay, so we're ready for a bonus question. And for you all that knows, and I know you all know, we do $50 for whoever gets the bonus question faster. I don't ask it because different people's computers have different speeds, but everybody gets the text at the same time. So we actually do it through text first, and then everybody gets an equal chance. Whoever answers it first correctly gets the $50. And then we'll email you a code, and then you can order and put that in your code. Also, I want to mention that in two weeks, we won't be, be here. We'll be here in three weeks. In two weeks, we'll be actually filming the PBS show in um, another state. And so we won't be here in two weeks. We'll be here in three weeks. That's when we're actually filming the show, and we're so excited. And we need your support. Did I mention that to you? We need your support. So that's why we offer the free pattern with the DVD so we can pay for all this expensive stuff. <laughs> okay, so did we get the bonus question? All right. All right, so the bonus question is, what year did silhouette patterns begin? Yeah. <laughs> they say, is this right? <laughs> did anybody get it? What year did silhouette patterns begin? We got it? So we're 17 years old as a pattern company, and if you do the math, that means we started in 1997 with our first 
two patterns. It was in March of 1997 when we released those patterns. So that means we'll be 18 years old this coming March. That's not long away. Sometimes I wish I was 18 years old. <laughs> no, I don't think that's true. All right, who won? Terry33. Hi, Terry33. Can I say thanks to you all for watching for us? And if you have not subscribed to YouTube, would you all subscribe? We are doing, you know what we figured out? It, well, we didn't figure it out. We hired somebody new and they knew the answers. <laughs> but um, YouTube has a great way. Like, if you haven't seen it, we put the welt pocket up. We did the welt pocket. I literally sewed the welt pocket step by step and we put it up on YouTube. So when you guys have questions about how to do a method or like the shirt, like that Georgia shirt or whatever that is, we can actually film that section and we can put it up on YouTube. If you subscribe to YouTube, you don't have to give them your like entire life story. It's not like Facebook. All you have to do is subscribe and then when you subscribe to our channel, that means like when we put up new videos, you'll receive notice that a new video has been put up. So it really helps us for you all to subscribe and it helps you for you all to subscribe. So, and we're filming some new ones this week and we're going to put those up periodically. We won't inundate you, but one, one new one a week we'll put up. And again, we can do various methods on the sewing machine. So I'm really excited about doing that because it'll be like visual guide sheets is what I'm thinking. So we really appreciate it. All right. Then this was good. Hopefully you got some good ideas. We're going to be back. We'll see you in three weeks, which is November something, but I don't know that date. Actually, it's the 10th. It's November 10th. So we're going to see you November 10th. And until then, have a wonderful Halloween. Don't get spooked. And we'll see you then. Thanks for being here. Happy sewing. Bye.